everybody, Robert here with VRPAutodesigns.com. Today we're going to be working on installing a box in a 2021 Jeep Gladiator. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to actually show you everything that you're going to need to install. Uh, everything from the uh, wiring kit to your inline converter and your amplifier. So what we've got here is actually uh, we've taken the stuff that we sell, the kit that we sell on uh, for the Jeep Gladiators. Uh, but we are. Uh, this is normally a kit that comes with the 10 inch, uh, the two 10 inch uh, sub and box uh, combo. In this, what's what's different between that and this one is we're actually installing a more powerful amp and we're installing four eights. That's the only difference. But we're gonna do a rundown on how to wire it up from the battery all the way to the back, uh, where to run your wires and that sort of thing. So we're gonna do the actual install of the wiring kit for your amplifier. We're also taking the LC2i Pro, which is what we really recommend if you're gonna run like your factory radio. Um, you're gonna need a good high quality inline converter. To me, I really recommend this kit, even if you don't buy it from us, I really think this one's the best one out there currently. Um, now, if you're running like the Alpine aftermarket radio or you're running with the, um, the Stinger uh, aftermarket radio or any other ones, uh, you will not need this. This is only if you plan on running your factory radio. Um, which a lot of people choose to keep just because there's so many functions on there already if you get like the Alpine, the 8.4 uh, inch Alpine system. So we're gonna do this, we're gonna show you how to install this, the wiring kit, how to run the wires. Um, we're gonna show you how to install the amp and um, this, on this uh, truck, what we're gonna be doing is we're actually gonna be installing the eights. Um, we're doing all Rockford Fosgate with our uh, four, uh, four speaker or four eight inch speaker uh, box. Um, this kit is online. If you guys choose and want to get one of these boxes, you can get it on our website on, at brpautodesigns.com. Uh, the same thing for the tens, if you want the two tens. Um, this will come with all the hardware. Uh, these boxes come with new bolts that we, uh, when we ship it out, we send you out with new bolts and that way um, you can bolt this down and it won't be shifting forward or anything like that when you're out on the trail or, or, trail or uh, you know, playing around. We want to make sure that this is stable and it's not going to get stolen. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to proceed to go to the truck and we're going to show you what you're going to need to do to get this all installed. Okay, so now what we're going to need to do is we're actually going to need to remove the cubby from the bottom of the truck. Now, we've already actually done that. Uh, we were messing around with it a couple weeks back and we, re we removed it. But all it is is uh, four 10 millimeter bolts that bolt that cubby down. You're just going to remove all four of these. As you can see, there's two on that side and two on this side and that cubby will come out. That being said, once you do that, you will need to remove the jack itself, which in most cases, if you've got a lifted gladiator, that jack is gonna serve no purpose. It's pointless to even have it. So we've removed that jack, it's gone from there. Um, next thing is we do need to uh, remove the floor mats, whether you have the plastic ones um, or you have the, uh, the factory cloth ones, you will need to remove them and get, them, get rid of them. Get, get them out of your way. And the last but not least is gonna be the, uh, the little container, this little cubby thing that holds your bolts for your doors and that sort of thing. You will need to find another place for your bolts once you remove that. The best place is whenever I take off my doors on my Gladiator, I just put them in the center console and I'm done. Um, these do take two 10 millimeter bolts that go that hold this little plastic trim there. You're just gonna remove those and that will slide out and that's pretty much it. From there, we can proceed to the next step, which is we're gonna bring in the box and show you how to uh, bolt it down. But before that, actually, uh, I skipped the step, is I'm gonna remove this seat entirely. And the reason for that is because on this one here, we'll see if you can see, is there's actually a spot in the back and we, we're gonna mount the amplifier back here. Um, this does have the Alpine system, so it has a subwoofer on that end. We're not gonna even mess with that. We're just gonna mount the amp here because like I said, we're gonna be installing the four eights. And normally if we're installing the two tens, um, there's room on top of the box where you can install your amplifier, your inline converter, and that's it. But in this case, we need to find a spot for the amp. There's two options. One is under the, the passenger seat, 
or back here. Like I said, we're gonna, we chose to install it back here. So I am gonna remove this seat. That's gonna be the next step. And then from there, we'll go ahead and do the box. Okay, so what we've got is we've got our 10 millimeter with an extension. We're just gonna put that on. I'm gonna remove this piece here. And like I told you earlier, you're gonna just need to loosen these up to remove it. And it's really, really simple and easy. Okay, so the next step is we're gonna remove this back seat, just that the uh, driver's side, like I mentioned earlier. But for that, you need to follow instructions really good because we wanna make, sure, make sure that it's easy for you to do. So if you look down, you'll see that we will need to remove these uh, screws there. And those are going to be a T, T25, I believe. There's one here and there's one on the other side. So what we're going to do is we're going to just take this and remove that from there and then remove the other one. It's going to be identical like that one on that side. And whatever you do, do not lose these. You will need to put this back once you install your box. It should just pop up. That's all it is. So we're going to move this over to the side and then we're going to start working underneath here. If you look down here, there's two bolts, this one here and this one here. They're both 10 millimeters. We are gonna need to get our socket, 10 millimeter socket. And there's one, and there's the next one. So now we'll put these to the side as well because you don't wanna lose those, and we will proceed to remove these here. There's gonna be four of these. So now what we've done is we've actually, you're gonna need uh, an 11 inch, uh, 11, I'm sorry, 11 millimeter uh, socket and that will fit nice and snug. Now we have done this before, even though it has a, a star shaped uh, bolt on there, the 11 uh, millimeter uh, socket will work with that. We've, we've done this before, it won't strip. We've re removed it, uh, that's one we used to build the other Gladiator when we did the seats and all of that. So you should be fine, just make sure it fits nice, nice and snug. Um, we're gonna use the air ratchet for this one to make it a little bit easier for us. It's come out, fits perfectly fine. If you plan on upgrading your seats and you wanna put leather on them or that sort of thing, that's what you're gonna need to uh, remove them. So just keep that in mind. We'll remove the ones on this side as well. So the next one we're gonna do is you can see there's one back here, it's hidden, and there's another one right there. So those we're just gonna reach back there as best we can. So now I'm gonna have Stevie help me pull this out. So it should pop up. It's always good to have Hold this up, a helping hand. You got it? Yep. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run our wires and we're gonna mount that amplifier right in here. So let's go to the step of uh, doing the wiring from the battery all the way through where to run it through. This uh, will be the same if you have a Jeep Wrangler JL because from the back seat forward, it's no different than, the, than a Jeep Wrangler JL. The Gladiator and, and the JL are pretty much the same vehicle uh, besides the bed. Anyways, let's proceed to the next step. Okay, so what we've got now is we've actually got our wiring kit. And what I really recommend is you run at least a four gauge. That's probably the best way to go. Um, you can run a eight gauge, but four gauge uh, is recommended in more, most applications if you can. And the reason for that is you've got more uh, a, a thicker cable, you've got more power that can run through it. Uh, picture it like a river, you know, the, uh, you've got so much water and the wider the river, the more easier the, uh, the flow of water will be. And that's the same thing when it comes to current or power. So I do recommend running a good, decent amount of power to your amplifier, that way you're not starving it. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be running this 4 gauge uh, power wire. I'm um, just going to go ahead and take my blade and cut it open. And your kit should come with just about everything you need if you're just running one amp. Um, this is more than what you will uh, need. Uh, you shouldn't need any more. 
uh, but what it is is you should come with a, a good fuse and a fuse holder uh, with all of your uh, wiring, a uh, couple of zip ties and that sort of thing. Put this out here. And uh, your RCAs. And of course, your remote wire. Now this one, like I said, comes with everything. And most of these uh, wiring kits will have everything that you will need. Um, if you're now, if you're running like a competition uh, stereo system or something like that, then uh, you're going to need uh, all kinds of crazy wires. For this application, most applications, this is more than enough. Um, and you should be happy with, with something like this. Um, there's the ground, the blue wires for your remote, which in this case, we're only going to need a little bit. Your speaker wire and the power wire. So now what we're just going to do is we're just going to run this, uh, run this through, find a spot to run it through, and run it all the way to the back. Yeah. All right. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to run. I'm trying to figure out where my battery's located, so we know that's here. I'm just going to run it in that direction because the grommet uh, where you're going to run this cable through is going to be through the firewall on that side. So what I like to do is just get an idea, just run it across and leave a little bit of line, a little extra line, so we have an idea of where it's going to go. So you're going to run the, the cable, run it back here. We'll leave that for now and then uh, we'll go to that end and try to connect it. So what we're going to do is we're going to run that this power cable through here in the back of here. Um, what I'd like to use is this. I have small fingers but I still can't get in there so the best thing to do is just run this through here like so. You can see it pop up on the other side like so and slowly and voila! Okay, so as you can see, we ran the wire through there. Um, we made it nice and snug here um, to keep stuff from coming through. Um, any water, any liquids, that sort of thing, as best that we could. Um, like I said, they were running their wires. This is actually the wires for their uh, switch, switch lighting kit. And so that'll make it nice and snug. It's very important that you do this because if you ever go through water or anything else, you will have issues with water coming in. And we also uh, put Tessa tape down here to get it all black so it'll blend in so you, it won't be exposed to wires. And then we're gonna run the, uh, the plastic piece or the whatever, I'm not, I'm not sure what you call it, but that goes on the, on the rest of the cable. We're just gonna run this back here, run it through here, and, um, and then go on the inside and show you how to do the rest of that. The last thing you wanna do is put power to this that's the very last thing you ever do so we're just leaving that be for now we're going to continue here okay so you can see that's where that grommet is the power uh, cable came through there um, now we're going to need to remove all of these plastics this is simple it just pops out if you've taken off your doors uh, you know what I mean you got to make sure you keep an eye on these little plastic trims though these get lost everywhere. I do recommend you go to the dealership and just buy a box because you will be losing those when you take off your doors. Um, I don't know how many I've lost already on our other uh, Gladiator. When we take off the doors, they just fall back back here. Uh, it just, it's, they're really easy to lose. Um, wish Jeep would have thought of a better way to get rid of them, but uh, that's kind of what we need to do. That being said, you will need to remove this plastic trim which if I recall just pops out give me a minute I'm gonna try to pop it out and then we're just gonna do the same thing all the way through here so we can run the power up here um, so I'm gonna hand this over to my handy helper and I do recommend if you've got somebody to help you it makes it much easier um, somebody get your tools or, or you know just give you a hand because it can get tedious that being said um, let me pop those off and then we'll continue okay so this will just snap out you just have to pull tug that way uh, what I did forget is to remove this there is a 
I want to say it's a 10 millimeter just little it's it doesn't even qualify as a bolt it's so thin you are just, just gonna remove that um, but you want to disconnect and remove the uh, the door ele electrical system and all it is as you can see is push down push down here on the tab and then pull up at the same time and this will release the door piece here that will allow you to get to that and just give you more more area to work on realistically we don't need it because um, this is just gonna slide back in here but if you feel that it'll help you work easier then by all means you can re remove that um, we're just gonna put this here now I'm not putting any zip ties anywhere yet, just yet, just because um, we're gonna continue working with it and then right before, um, right before, uh, once we get it all connected and tuned where we want it, then we can go back and button up everything and zip tie everything together. Alrighty, you're just gonna push underneath here. So this will give us enough range to run the power wire there. We got it all squeezed in, it's out of the way. Um, this is where our wire is going to come out. We got plenty of length and then we're just going to put that there. Um, that being said, we're going to go to the next step and show you guys uh, the amplifier that we're going to be installing it in here and then give you an idea of what it's going to look like. Okay. So one of the things you want to do is we're looking locating a good spot to ground our uh, ground cable and so a really nice uh, place to put them is actually here one of these three um, we've already got our power wire but what you want to do is you want to make sure that you expose as much metal as possible so you're getting a good ground that is one of the most important things uh, I've seen some horrible grounding but we already have these three spots and we know that they're welded into the frame so this should be easy what you want to do is either take sandpaper or something and really really sand it down the best that, I, that you can we've got this wheel uh, the steel wheel and that's what we're going to use we want to really sand as much as you can mainly what I'm trying to do is get as much metal on this here um, and you can see we got all of the paint off all of the that is gone you can see the bottom you can see the bottom of this was originally painted that's how that was and we got it all off a lot of this is just a real uh, small amount so it shouldn't be too hard um, it, like I said the most important thing is grounding make sure you're getting a good ground so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the ground here and we're gonna run it through here so the amp will, will sit there okay so one thing that I did was I drilled two holes in the back of here this plastic trim you could just go at an angle um, and ran this one through here and pulled it through uh, pulled the, the black one and then just ran the the red one and did I put another hole right next to it so at least we have all our wires run and uh, that's pretty much what we're gonna do here um, I think now we can step to the next step um, which is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys the amplifier that I'm running that I'm gonna be using for this setup. Okay, so now that we've got the power wires uh, ran for the amplifier, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this next step which is the inline converter and the amplifier that we're gonna be using. Now, we chose uh, and we really like this unit. This is the LC2i Pro. Uh, Gabriel, come on in and, and we're gonna show you what, what's in it. Now, the LC2i is the inline converter and what it is, is where we're gonna get our signal for our speakers or, or to run to our amplifier. So as you can see, this is what it looks like. Now, we're gonna run our uh, rear speakers and run them into here. That's how we're gonna get the signal for the amplifier. From there, they're gonna go out to uh, the uh, RCAs and they're gonna run into the amplifier. Uh, from there, uh, we're gonna switch this on to GTO. What that means is great turn on. What that does is it gets the signal from 
your uh, rear speakers, when you turn on your uh, radio on your dash, it sends a signal to the speakers, which will then be picked up here, which will give this power. Um, so you don't have to figure out a way to run a, a remote wire from your receiver to your uh, amplifier or your inline converter. This will automatically pick it up. From there, we're gonna run a remote out, as you can see here. From that, we're gonna tap in, that into your amplifier. Um, and that's how we're gonna get our signal for the amplifier to turn on. Uh, the other ones are gonna be your 12 volt and your ground, and we're just gonna use the wires that we use, the amplifier wires uh, that we already ran, we're just gonna run a line to here and here. Uh, from there, like I said, we're gonna run our RCAs out to the amplifier, and then we're just gonna adjust and tune what we need to do. Um, that's that. So uh, if we put that aside, we can show you also that the LC2i Pro comes with a uh, base remote knob in case your amplifier doesn't have one. Um, and the uh, the wire that you're gonna run from that and of course a little little thing guitar tuner type of thing um, We're gonna put this aside and we're gonna actually show you what the ampli what what amplifier we're running now We're running the punch 1000 by Rockford Fosgate These amps I like running them just because they're proven. They're always the best quality. They really uh, take pride in the design and the best part is they actually come with a birth birth certificate along with uh, the dyno testing that they did at the factory before they shipped it out. And as you can see, this bad boy is pushing out 1,535 watts when tested at one ohm. So that being said, these amplifiers are really, really good amplifiers. But if you're familiar with Rockford Fosgate, you know that they've been in the game for a very long time and you know you're getting quality. You're not gonna get a uh, inflated number where it says, you know, 3,000 watts and it's really, 700 watts if you're if it says a thousand watts you're probably going to get more power than that this is a thousand watt amplifier and as you can see it's 1535 watts actually pushing out so they're underrated um, but as you can see this is the amplifier these are the connectors rcas everything you need is here from here we're going to go to the jeep and see where we can fit it where the best spot is how we're going to wire uh how we're going to run the wires uh, what will be the perfect setup. So anyways, let's continue to that. So what we're gonna do is I've actually looked at it here and it's a, like I said, the best spot, everything is run down here. So I think this is gonna be perfect here. Um, if we take this and line it up, it's just perfect for what we're doing. So that's where we're gonna run that. I do have to figure out Let's see if I move this over this way a little bit, maybe move it there. And I'm thinking maybe the LC2i will go here. The other option would be in this area by the box. But I think everything would be better if it's right next to each other. What we are gonna do is we are gonna rip these plastic tabs. These are actually just melted in to hold this little fabric piece. It's got like one, two, three. And so I am gonna just, rather than pulling this entire panel off, I'm just gonna pull on this until I break it off. Um, you can do it however you want. I've just worked in, on enough of these gladiators um, to, to know where it's at. Um, when we did our build on our other one, we took the entire panel off and we were able to see how everything is placed. So we're just gonna take this off and then uh, put the amplifier there. Okay, so as you can see, we removed this piece. Now, it had a couple little plastic pieces from the plastic on top here that were part of this, which it was just really easy to break off. But that's part of this panel here that has nothing to do with the back. The only ones that are uh, clipped on are the back ones here. But that just went like so. We removed it, you can see here it is. We're gonna toss that aside because we're not gonna need it. Now you will, I do recommend you run everything if you're gonna use this area for any type of amplifier. What we're gonna do is we're gonna mount it here. Um, this amplifier comes with everything you will need, the screws, that sort of thing. I know there's nothing back here. We're not gonna hit any wires or anything because the wires are actually back on this side of, of it. Um, and there is a, a, a little module here, but it's out of the way. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount it here, run the screws through there. And it's not gonna go through your bed because the bed is further out. Like I said, I, I've done this, I know what we're doing. Um, 
these here, these that's what we broke off that were part of that uh, that piece there. Um, but what we want to do is we want to run our RCAs. We're going to run them on in input. So we're going to do the white on top and then the red at the bottom. Um, and we want to get as much as we possibly can. We take this, the remote wire. I always like to pull it back a little bit further because for some reason the remote wire is always really small but I, I turn it, bend it over and then kind of do that. Um, where is the, here we go, sorry, pull this off because, there we go. Um, this is going to be the little tool that they come with so you can tighten it. So we're going to feed it through here. Well, I guess we have to take this piece off first. So let's take this cover, and this is actually your crossover that's built into your amplifier. And this is what you're gonna tune it with, so this might as well come off now. And you may be running a different amplifier. This is the one that we're running for ours, but I'm just giving you an idea of where you can mount it if you're running the 4 8s. Um, but, as you can see, we're gonna need a Phillips. We'll take this. it in here okay so we ran our wires our ground wires what we're gonna do is gonna take this power wire and cut out about this much so there you go round there's a I'm sorry the positive and the negative now what I am not going to do is I'm not going to show you how to wire up the speakers or I'm going to wire them up but I'm not going to show you because they're, uh, they're two ohm dual voice coil and depending on what kind of speaker uh, setup you're doing and it, you know the applications could be completely different than this. This is basically to show you guys how to wire up the amplifier, where, where a good spot to wire it up and set it up on a Gladiator. Um, a lot of this application will also work with a Wrangler. The only difference is, you know, you have the, the back cargo area and on these you don't. That's the only difference. But other than that, everything else is the same. If you look, we're going to run the ground here and the positive here. So we're going to put this in, feed it in to our amplifier. actually put this here and what I'm actually thinking is, is leaving this here and maybe running our inline converter down in here so it's still kind of up and out of the way so it won't be visible out here but it looks good to me there where it's at so now I'm just going to continue to uh, screw the, the amp in and we should be set as far as that. Okay, so one of the things that I decided to do, we were having too many issues trying to figure out where the LC2 is going to go and that sort of thing. So I decided to remove the little cubby down at the bottom, which is going to be pretty much useless anyways. And all it is is two 10 millimeter bolts that go on here, uh, or sorry, nuts, uh, one on each side. And then all you have to do is kind of pull it out and just pry on it and it will pop out. As you can see, it has these little connections back here and that's pretty much it. Everything else is just real simple. And now you have this little work area. Once it's all finished, you're never gonna see this anyway, so just keep that in mind when you're doing this. So one of the other things that I decided to also do to give it more ventilation is I decided to go out and get these spacers. And what they will do is they will push the amp uh, a little bit further out so um, when it bolts down it'll it'll allow air to ventilate through the back it's just always a good idea to do that if you have it um, it just makes it much easier uh, or much better for the amplifier to breathe and if you know uh, amps um, heat is the uh, the one thing you don't want on your amp so uh, anything you can do to help it is great that's what we're doing on our end to help uh, prevent heat from uh, building up on here and therefore uh, going into protective mode so that's what we're going to be doing um, like I said we can see you can see where the spacer is these are just nylon spacers you can buy them at any hardware store 
there's different kinds. Um, this is perfect for what we're what we're doing. Okay, so we've got the, the amplifier nice and mounted. You can see there's an airspace back here with those spacers. Now we're just gonna put this here, as you can see, and we'll be able to get to everything really e easy. Um, we'll be able to screw that on there. And what's really nice about these is, look, you can actually remove them. So you can run your wires and then once you're, you're, uh, you're ready, you just plug them in. So that's a really nice feature that we have on this. Um, what I am going to do is actually run the uh, remote wire for uh, the base knob. So I'm going to remove this here so I can have it already plug, plugged into here and it'll make it easy. But yeah, we're just going to run this here and uh, that'll be that. Once we're done with that, then we can proceed to tapping into the uh, soundbar speakers and installing the box with the suds. Okay, so what we've done here is, um, like I said, you pull these out and you're gonna go to, for the remote for the amplifier, you're gonna go to remote out, you see that? Remote out, that's the one at the end. Um, then you're gonna go to a 12 volt, so you got your power on this side, 12 volt, and then you're gonna do your ground, which is at the end here. So we, I pull this out, and now I'm putting it in. And now you can see what it actually looks like. That's what it looks like there. Can you see that? That's what it looks like. So now we're gonna run these over to this side. And what I'm actually gonna do is, hold on a second. Well, we'll, we'll do that later. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these and I'm actually glad that we did remove that cubby because it was in the way of everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this out like this, give it a good amount of wire, expose enough wire, because, do this, we're gonna take the ground and disconnect it, if I can find my screwdriver. We're gonna take this ground, as you can see here, pull it out, okay. Pull the ground out and I'm gonna actually I'm gonna give a little bit more because I like to wrap it around. Wire there. And that's how we're gonna get the power to the inline converter. Once we do that. Then we're just gonna tap and slide this back in like so. I'm gonna tighten this. And we're gonna do the same for the power wire. So we're gonna take the power wire and disconnect it, which is B, B positive. That's your power wire that out and let's give it a little bit more wire expose a little bit more wire there by the time we're done with this this is gonna look really good um, you want to take your time when you're installing this because it, it is crucial it is electrical so that's tight so that's what we're gonna get our power for this um, what we've also done is now I pre-run these wires. I just kind of uh, wired one into the other. And this is going to be for your speaker inputs. These speaker inputs, you can see, are going to run to that side over there. They're going to run to that side, the B pillar. That's where the uh, uh, wires are for the sound bar. So if we move the C forward, the wires are going to be here and I can actually see him right there 
those are those twisted wires we're gonna cut that open and we're gonna run this wire and tap into there once we're done with that then we can do our final install of the subwoofer and the box and it should go it should flow pretty easy once we do that because the big part is already connected and done with so that being said let's go to the next step okay so we went ahead and ran the wires from the lc2i the inline uh, converter and uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run it up from behind here and we're gonna tap into these twisted green wires these are actually the speaker wires for the sound bar and we're gonna tap into these darker ones as you can see um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this you can see also I use Tessa tape to blacken it out and uh, get it nice and neat um, pull this forward if I can pull this it will be a little tight like so now you just need to pull outward like this. That'll make it snap out, in case you're wondering. So we run it through here. And to here. Once you do that, you can start to snap these back. Okay. You can put the carpet back where it belongs. So anyways, now that we've got this here, what uh, you can do is you can actually cut these. They're going to be the darker colors. Um, what you can do is you can cut them and solder them. Um, but instead, um, what we're going to do is we're just going to tap into them with these. Um, instead of cutting and doing that. and um, You can do it your way. But this seems to work. We've used, we've done this a lot, and uh, this seems there seems to be no issues with that. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull these out. You can see there you, you can't miss them because they're twisted. You got these other twisted ones in lighter colors, but these are the speaker wires. The ones that are twisted are the speaker wires. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna take this. For example, we've got the uh, the green green is the positive. So that one would be this one here. Uh, the gray dark and green uh, the, the gray dark green is your negative okay so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this here and we're gonna tap into it just makes it much easier I'm not a fan of cutting too much especially when it comes to electrical and these wires are really tight so so once you get that you're just gonna squeeze and I always like to turn them around twist and make sure they get a good bite like that and now we're going to do the same thing with the other one. green which is you see that light green and that dark green that one's gonna be your positive and this is for the left there we go we take this one and this is it's got a touch of gray and a touch and it's all green that's your negative okay so that's the left side it's already done so now we're going to do the same thing with this one, okay, which is going to be this here. It actually looks more like a purple, but that's what the instructions come with.
tap in to the positive, which is this one here. And this is the negative. And that should be it. Okay, so now we're just gonna get the subwoofer, bring it out, or the subwoofer box, mount that, and then um, go from there, which hopefully this part will go a lot smoother and a lot quicker. Alrighty, we're gonna leave that there in case we need a, you know, something's not right. We don't wanna button up everything 100% until you're you're sure everything's gonna work or work in proper. Um, but uh, then we'll go to the other step over here, and we'll show you how this is gonna work here. Okay, so we're gonna put in the box, and in some cases, you may need it, if you're, you're running our eights, you may need to trim these. Sometimes the carpet is a little thicker in here where they have this little foam insulation. Um, thicker in others and then then uh, and some it's thicker and some is less But the idea is for this box to fit just nice and snug right there You can put that underneath behind the back here please. Okay, so I'm gonna get the bolts and I'm gonna show you first before you do that You will need to run your wires before you bolt the box down keep that in mind because Once you bolt the box down you won't be able to get to the uh, the the uh, the push pin connectors which are back here on our setup we're going to be running all of our wires is going to run to this side so that's one of the reasons why i ran this here as you can see and all i'm doing is i'm not going to use that connector i'm just going to use this side so all i'm doing is connecting it back here if you can see there's a positive and then there's a negative and now we can take this line it up make sure your wires are not in the way make sure actually what I should have done is run this uh, sorry I'm gonna disconnect it see these are the little things that you want to look at when you're connecting your, your setup I'm actually gonna run these down here so they're not visible up here so now like I said I'll reconnect it again we're gonna leave that side blank for this application now we can put it back here, line it up with the holes, and we'll install the subwoofers. Okay, so one of the things that you're gonna, you might have to do depending on the truck, because I know we've had it in certain trucks and in others we haven't, but they have this little, see this foam piece here? Let's remove that. And once you remove that, your box should line up perfectly fine. And we're aware of this, but it seems like recently they started putting these in because before they didn't. So now you should be able to line up your box without any issue. And it's a huge difference right away. I can tell right away the, the holes are lining up. You good on that, that end, Stevie? Mm -hmm. Before I remove that, I couldn't line except for one and it was really really tough to line up and the other thing is we want these holes to be covered and the way it was it wouldn't allow the washers to cover it so you want the box to be completely sealed as you can see let's do one and then we'll do the other side so if you want to tighten one side that's fine don't tighten both on the same side until you get that other side so now what we'll do is we'll push make sure that that hole is covered Stevie okay so we're pretty much uh, done with our setup um, we've got our amplifier mounted we've got our inline converter uh, wired up um, we still need to button up the wiring here uh, the box is bolted down as you can see it's sturdy it's not going anywhere and our subs are wired up now the way we wired it up may be different than what you, the way you would wire it up and that's why we didn't show you how to which direction to wire them up or how to wire them up because you may be doing a different setup. There's different ways you could uh, wire them up. You could wire them up through a one ohm load, a two ohm, a four, eight. There's just several options. So um, the basis as far as the amplifier and the inline converter and everything else is gonna be the same. Just the way you wire up your, your subs may be different. 
So that's kind of what we wanted to show you. Um, now all I have to do, since everything is grounded, we got the ground, we got the wires running to our sub, we got the, uh, the wires running to the inline converter. Now all we need to do is wire up the front, put the fuse holder and the fuse in right before the battery. Um, so now we're gonna proceed to that so we can get full power and start testing this out. Alrighty, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish this off. Now, you have to find a spot, a good spot for your fuse. Um, I'm gonna have to build a little bracket for this, but I'm gonna locate it here. That's how we have it located on our, on our um, other uh, gladiator. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna build something for that. But for now, I think I'm just gonna zip tie it just because we've been working on this for a while. And it's the uh, it's it's night now actually, but I'm just gonna wire it up here and then we'll finish it off. That way we can at least test everything out, make sure everything's running good. So that being said, we're gonna need to cut this right around here. So I'm gonna take this here, take my cutters. So now I'm gonna take this. We're gonna need an Allen wrench. To loosen that and then we're gonna put this right in here we're gonna do the same thing to the other side which is here and we're gonna join them like so put this little rubber grommet on there and that rubber grommet serves as a way to protect it from water going in there Okay, so once you got this all where you want it, we're just gonna go ahead and tap into one of these positive uh, terminals here. Um, the good thing is that these Jeeps have several already they come with from factory, because they know you're gonna be adding aftermarket either lights or something or other. So that's what we're gonna be doing here. I'm gonna remove this one actually, remove that 10 millimeter. Like I said, for now, I just want to test out all of this stuff, make sure it's working properly, and then we'll make a little mounting plate for that, so it'll it'll actually uh, be out of the way. But for now, we're just going to do that and then test everything out, and once I'm happy with the results, then we can figure out what we're going to do, button everything else up. But that being said, now, before we put this together, we're gonna go and test everything out and make sure everything is working properly and we're getting the base that we want. So let's head over to that side. Okay, if everything is wired the way you're supposed to, you should get this lighting up. You can see it's on, everything's there. So now we're just gonna play some music and see, we may, we're probably gonna need a tune it here, but I wanna make sure that everything is connected right. We got power to it. We've got our power, we've got everything. It's just a matter of getting this tuned to where we want it and then buttoning it all up and, and set up. And uh, we'll show you the finished product once we, we uh, zip tie everything, clean everything up, uh, mount, uh, find a spot for the base knob. But uh, for now, we're just gonna test it out. Okay, so we're all hooked up. Everything sounds really, really good. Um, hits pretty good. Uh, the only issue is we were gonna try to do a real quick sample, but I was recommended not to do it just because of the copyrights. So that being said, we don't wanna have any issues with that, but I wanted to at least show you guys what we have. Um, right now, what I'm gonna do is just button it up, get it all squared away, put the seat back in. Um, the seat goes back in the uh, the way it came out. You just have to reverse everything So I'm gonna clean everything up find a spot for the remote uh, The base remote and then go from there. So that's pretty much it here I will show you a little clip of it once we have it all done so you guys can actually see what it's what it all looks like all done Okay, so now we're all done. We finished up. We tucked everything away. It's back to normal um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a real quick rundown. I'm gonna show you how we did it here. And as you can see, the fuse is there and the wire's back there. It runs through the back by the firewall. I am gonna put two or three zip ties back there to, to, uh, to hold that wire. Other than that, it's pretty much done. 
you can see we ran it through here and then it goes down at the bottom down there okay now from there um, we uh, come to the back um, we have our base knob here which is where we decided to put it and the reason for that is it's real easy to get to you don't have to find it the other thing is the light isn't going to be hitting me directly in the eyes as we're driving so that's something to keep in mind when installing a base knob they usually have a little light and it's cool when you're just at home or whatever playing with it but if you're driving it does get annoying if it's hitting you directly in the eyes um, it's all put away here we walk to the back we've got our amplifiers back here you see there's the amplifier and there's the inline converter all nice and neat um, nothing hacked and that's kind of what you want to do you want to go for the nice clean look you want to make sure it doesn't look like somebody installed it in their backyard or did a half-assed job so um, we like doing things right that's how we do it you can see here's the subs um, if you have this plastic uh, slush mat you will need to trim it to get it to fit underneath the box but uh, it's real simple there if you do have the uh, factory cloth uh, floor mats they will fit nice and neat here they go with the angle of the box or, or we designed the box uh, with that in mind other than that we're all done here um, so hopefully this video helped you guys out I try to make it as detailed as possible so you guys can actually get an idea of how to install it if you're gonna be doing this yourself I know there's a lot of a lot of guys and girls that like doing stuff themselves so um, hopefully this video does help you now keep in mind it does take us a while I think it took us like 10 hours just to make this video uh, even though on your end it's probably like 30 minutes that being said you know we do appreciate you guys following us and giving us a like and that sort of thing sharing us if possible uh, anyways hope you guys like this video uh, and uh, we'll hopefully be making more I think I'm gonna be upgrading the the dash speakers and the sound bar uh, I'm gonna try to make a video on that uh, to help you guys out that being said you guys have a wonderful day and uh, I look forward to making another video soon bye everybody God bless you all